no one really knows whether he likes being called a lizard or not. The <laughs> law. <laughs> <laughs> It's time for me to thank another one of our supporters. This time, it's Encore Crosby. A lot of people say to me, Rochi, you're looking great on the Scouse House. You're dressed so well. What's your secret? I'll tell you, it's Encore Crosby. Encore Crosby was established in 1992. It's an independent clothing store with a focus on quality brands. Dressing the people of Crosby and beyond for 30 years. So if you're from Crosby, they'll dress you. If you're from Somewhere else, Dovecot, Toxteth. You're from Birmingham, they'll dress you, probably, because they've got a website you can order online at encoreretail.co.uk. On Instagram, it's just Encore Crosby. Get on them, you know it makes sense. Encore Crosby. Okay, we're back in the Scouse house once again, and the place is lit up because we've got a fantastic guest. A straight talking scouse siren. It's Rachel Rhodes, everybody. Yeah. Hi, how are you? I'm good, Rachel. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. This is all very strange. It's, it's such an exciting day to, to have you in, but, but as if it couldn't get even more exciting for you, you've just been telling me you've been on your very first Mersey Ferry experience. <laughs> yeah, I went on the Mersey Ferry today and it's such a gorgeous day, but it was freezing. Like, I thought I was going to really appreciate the views, but I just froze my little boobies off. Yeah. I'm not even going to lie. Well, I, I'm not going to hazard a guess at, at your age, Rachel, but how have you got to, however old you are, <laughs> as a scouser, and you've never you've never been on the, across the Mersey on the Do you know what? I've even sang with Jerry Marsden when I was eight years no! old. No! Yeah. Name drop straight away. <laughs> there I it goes. I dropped it on the floor. It's over there. <laughs> <laughs> when I was eight years old, I sang with him, so I knew all about the song and everything, but I just... I just wasn't interested in getting frapped on a boat like I wasn't. Yeah, yeah. So I was filming today, but it was actually gorgeous. I'm not even going to lie. Like, gorgeous views. And thank God it was a hot day because I think I actually would have died of pneumonia if it weren't. Yeah. Praise the Lord it weren't raining. Well, we've brought you down to a, a, a tremendously warm studio. Yeah. Uh, Slightly cooking over here. <laughs> to, talk, to talk all things Scouse House. We know on the Scouse House we talk about um, things about Liverpool, people from Liverpool or Merseyside, should I say. Wirral, maybe, controversial. I don't know. But listen, before we go any further, I'm calling you a presenter, broadcaster, journalist. Is that right? Yeah, that, I'd say that's more what I, what I do these days. These you know, days. I've had a bit of a strange life. When I when I tell people about my life, they're like, what? What? You done what? And I'm like, yeah, you know, when I used to, like, dress up as a Disney princess or when I was, like, with a record label or when I was, like, at uni doing singing and dancing, you know, my life has, has just been a bit weird. But right now I'm very much journalist, presenter, and that's how I like things, you know. Brilliant. Well, we'll get into all of that, Rachel. <laughs> I'm sure you will. <laughs> and lots more. But let's go, let's go right back to the beginning. You are a born and bred Scouser, I if ever have met one. And uh, and why don't you just tell tell everyone that, that maybe doesn't know whereabouts in Liverpool you're from? Do you know what? It's really funny you say that because people from Liverpool tend to not think I'm from Liverpool. They think I'm like a wool or like... You know, that controversial as that is, they do. I get called a wall regularly. But I'm actually born and raised in Allerton. Allerton? Yeah, Allerton. I'm an L18 baby. All right. Um, so, yeah, born and raised, went to school in Toxteth, went to Belle Reve. It wasn't the best time in my life. In fact, I'd probably say it's one of the worst. I hated it. But, um, yeah, and I'd, I'm happy for you to even put that out there because it was a craft school. But, um, yeah, so born and raised in Liverpool. And then I went to Lippa. So I even stayed in Liverpool for uni and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, but my so why people don't think I'm from Liverpool is beyond me. I guess I didn't really pick up a Scouse accent till secondary school, though. I was quite posh when I was at my primary school. So, yeah. People say about the south south end of Liverpool, there's a slightly different way of of, of approaching the Scouse accent. I'm a little <laughs> bit of a I, I'm quite nomadic in my uh, in my. You're um, a Gattaca boy. I went to Gattaca, yeah, but my dad and my family, some of my family from Bootle. Uh, and I now live in Crosby, so I've, yeah, I've, I've, I've travelled across Liverpool. So I don't know, I mean, my accents, maybe, I would say 
it's it's sort of understandable when I when I travel uh, to to foreign lands. <laughs> Are I've you got, saying mine's not? No, I'm saying yours is, and clearly clearly you've uh, you've uh, befuddled people with uh, the way you, you you sound. Maybe only scousers, so oh, people right. not from Liverpool. So if I'm in Manchester, people are like, "Oh my god, it's the scouse one. She's the scousest thing that's ever walked the planet." And I'm like, "No, no." Like the other day, I was interviewing Meatball Molly, and um, one of the lads who was filming with me, he was like, "Oh my god, you are like the scousest thing." Sorry, another name I've just dropped. Oh, no. <laughs> we noticed. He was, like, yeah. <laughs> he was like, "You are the scousest thing ever." I can't even fault where you're from. And I'm like, wait till she walks around that corner now. Just you wait. And he was like, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. But yeah, so like, I, I'm I'm proud to be a scouser. I love being a scouser. But I think also in the industry that I'm in, you have to be accessible to a wider audience and not just other scousers. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. You've got to be understandable. I do stand-up comedy. Obviously, no one's going to appreciate a joke that they, they can't <laughs> quite tell if there was a punchline there or Your audience are like, you are? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got a mate, I've got a mate, a comedian mate of mine, Kyle, who's Kyle Legacy. Shout out Kyle Legacy, who's from like Hale Woods, so not a million miles away, is it from, it is yeah. in the South End, but he's yeah. more like, so it's a na- nasally like right up there and he's talking to Aus- Australians and that, like that. And I, I don't know how he manages to... <laughs> That's a lovely impression make, you've just done of your friend, by the way. And it's actually accurate as well. That's oh, the scary right, okay. thing as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, you mentioned Lipper there, Rachel. Yeah. So for anyone that doesn't know, maybe outside of the city or whatever, what, what is what is Lipper and, and tell us all about that? Oh, Lipper is just gorgeous. It's um, Liverpool Institute for Performing Arts. It's Paul McCartney School. Um, another name drop. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's three. I'm just, I'm just throwing them on the floor for everyone. So Settle down, <laughs> Rachel. We've been going five minutes. Um, You've dropped yeah. a beetle into conversation already. Already? Uh, I know, and he's God tier, isn't he? Let's yeah. be honest. But um, no, you don't actually meet him except for on graduation. So I'm not even going to lie. It's not like he's swan around the school saying hello to you. Did you meet him, by the way? Yeah, I did on what? graduation, and it was such a fun day. Like, so basically, my graduation story is actually hysterical. So what happened was, <laughs> you weren't thinking about it, it makes me die. Um, so basically, my sister was like, You wear a cap and gown so no one can see your outfit. You have to wear them as fabulous shoes. So she got me these Nina Rishi shoes, which you know, going back, that shows my age, really. Um, dipped in glitter. They were like gold stilettos dipped in glitter. Peep toe. She's got bigger feet than me, though. So they were like too big on me and they absolutely killed. And I was only a baby, really. So I was like shuffling along in these gold glittery shoes thinking I was gorgeous. And going up the stairs to go on stage to get your thing, it's like, okay, great. Um, and I basically was like waddling across the stage, but I had like a lad in front of me and a lad behind me who could help me get up the stage. Anyway... So I get over to Paul McCartney, you can see everyone going over me like, nice to meet you, sir. And I thought, oh, bloody hell, he needs to see me shoes. Because <laughs> <laughs> I put so much effort into wearing these shoes and my feet were covered in plasters. They were absolutely in agony. I couldn't walk I couldn't walk an inch in them without someone holding on to me. So I waddled over to Paul McCartney and I was like, he was like, hello. And I was like, do you like me shoes? <laughs> and he went, yeah, yeah, I like your whole outfit, in fact. And I was like, oh, my God, OK. And then I went to him, oh, my God my mum's over there and if you don't wave to her she's gonna kill me and he went oh <laughs> so I turned around and I pointed at my mum and my mum who's like cute as little Mrs Weasley was like ah <laughs> and he was like I take it that's your mum I was like yeah anyway it all goes a bit Pete Tong because then I sit back down and they, they're reading out these prizes and I'm not one bit interested because I'm putting more plasters on my feet and they go and the prize goes to Rachel Rhodes and I was like I've got to get on that stage by myself what was the prize? It was called the Beatles Story Prize. Okay. It means I was like, it means it was a Scouser winning a prize about, you know, Scousers in Liverpool. Beatles story, following the Beatles story. That went a bit peaked on considering I was studying music. But, you know, hey-ho. And then, um, so yeah, so I had to literally get up off my seat and crawl up the stage by myself. So by the time everyone finished clapping, and all you hear is me trying to get up the stairs, nice. couldn't get up the stairs, couldn't yeah. get up the stairs. So P- Paul McCartney is absolutely pissing himself laughing at me, like literally crying laughing. So I'm crawling up these stairs and I waddle over and he gets another picture with me. And then I basically has to walk me off stage because he can see I can't walk in these shoes and I've just <laughs> highlighted to him. And then, so because I was then sat on the end of the aisle, because I just won this prize, I got they just put me on the end of an aisle to so not make everyone get up again for me. As he then parades down the aisle, he drags me up the aisle with him. In a literal sense, by the way, let's not make any puns of that. I get dragged up the aisle by Paul McCartney. I was delighted. I'm not yeah. even going to lie. Yeah. Yeah. 
He dragged me up the un- aisle. Un- un- unbelievable. And uh, and I also like the way you put it back on your toes. He didn't just like the shoes, Rachel. He liked, he liked the old, me whole outfit. He liked the whole outfit. Baby Rachel was so impressed with herself, thinking, I've just chatted up Paul McCartney there. Basically, yeah. <laughs> very scouse, very scouse bird uh, behaviour, that isn't scouse it? Scouse bird behaviour, but like we say, Paul McCartney is a god tier scouser, so yeah, it's yeah, got to be yeah. done. So... We, we we digressed a little bit there off <laughs> Lipper. You went to Lipper. What did you what did you study? I did there? Mu- music from an arts kind of vibes. Yeah, all singing, all dancing, all fun. It was great. Yeah, yeah. it's and very much like Fame, the musical. Right. It's exactly like that. People are like, is it? I'm like, yeah, it is. Are you divas. Absolutely, but also the best people and the most talented people. And like, you'd be sat in the canteen and there'd be like a musician would just start playing a song and then the drummer will come out and then next thing singers are singing and the dancers are, and it's just it's just like that. And that's just all while everyone's eating their egg and chips, you know what I mean? Did you know anyone called Ray Bradshaw who went to Lipper? No, he's a he's a Scottish comedian who, uh, I know he went to Lipper maybe around the same time. But um, So music, yeah, any big, big music fan, do you... In fact, did you, did I, have you written a few songs down the, down the years? Oh, my God, you have done your research on me, haven't you? <laughs> I did not expect you to come up with that. Yes, I have. <laughs> yeah, so I have. I've been, I, was, I was actually like a real little dance music track person and I used to feature on loads of little tracks when I was a lot younger, before the days of, the, sort of giving my age away, yeah, before the days of like Spotify and things. But then recently I've written a few songs with my friend Josh, yeah, so I've featured on a few of his tracks with him, which is all fun and games and very Britney dance, very cute. It is. I, I love it. I love oh, it. I, I'm in a band, me and my mate Yeti are in a band called oh, The yeah? Buzz. Yeah, the Buzz? You, yeah, have you heard of The Buzz? No, never. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry that I haven't tracks. heard of you. We've got three tracks out. Um, you've not heard maybe six, maybe four? No, but I'm sure you're going to show me. Well, maybe off, yeah. Love off that for Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do that. Let's say you burst onto the scene with reality TV. Yeah. And it was called, what was it, um, Ibiza Weekender? <laughs> yeah. I went on the Ibiza Weekender, yeah. So I don't really know too much about that. What was what was so, Ibiza Weekender? Do you know what? I did reality TV before reality TV was a thing. And I love that I, I got out of it when I did, but I love that I did it. Like, what a ball. Um, Ibiza Weekender is basically you go on holiday and you go and get put in a hotel for free and you have to pretend to be a holiday rep, although you're not. But... I think it's the most real reality out of all the realities I've witnessed since because you know the way real- on reality TV you can see that they're like oh and then this person's going to walk in and you're going to act shocked well actually they don't re- they don't tell you what's going to happen on weekends huh? so what would happen is okay let's say you're on it with me mm. and say I'm dating you and then say you shagged Sophie on a night out classic Rochi so, you, yeah, classic Rochi, screwed me over, and I've not been Bubbly. on that night out. They'd have you and Sophie. They'd have you on reception, and they'd go, Rach, go in and ask them how his night out was. Did anyone get with anyone? What happened? So I don't know you've got with it, and you don't know I'm about to walk in and ask you. It's fucked up. So I'm like, oh, how was last night? Who got with who? And you're thinking there's a camera on me, so if I lie, I look like a dick. But if I tell the truth, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hurt you. So you sort of, you just see you go, <laughs> you know, and it's, um, so that's, it's like, it is quite real and you're like, your reactions are real. It is quite a reactive show. I don't think it is, well, I think it's finished now, but I don't think it was by the end of it. Like by the end of it, they had them like scrubbing to- toilets with toothbrushes. And I was like, that's just fake, isn't it? Like, let's be honest, no one's going to brush their teeth with a toothbrush that's been, but you know, if the storyline's not there. So it was on ITV2. Yeah, and it was, do you know what? It was an absolute ball, I'm not even going to lie. Like, you literally just stay in a hotel and they just give you free alcohol and they take you out and they all obviously have a plot that they think it's going to follow and you kind of have to, I just, you know, I just lived it, me. And they said, you took it really seriously because I just believed it was real life, so I was just living my best life thinking yeah. this is boss, free holiday and I beat that way, it's all going on. Where some people had real incentives of how to keep screen time, where I didn't, but luckily for me, there was a lot of drama going on around me that I was unaware of. So I was like the centre of a lot of drama that actually I didn't even know till it came out on TV and I was like, oh, 
<laughs> Very good. Didn't know that happened. Thank you've done, you. You've done two seasons of that? I've done uh, season and a half. Yeah, I left in season two. Because I was meant to go you back. killed and, off, was it, or what? No, oh. basically what happened was I was meant to go back and stay. And then and then I'd, I'd sort of already got the capital gig then. And so I was kind of a bit like in two minds about going back anyway. So I went back as a guest with the thing of they knew Jordan was leaving. You don't know who Jordan is, but they knew Jordan was leaving. I was going to take over. Um, it was going to be like, I came came in and Jordan had to be like, oh, I'm leaving because he was going to go and film X on the beach. Mm. So it's be like, oh, look, but our rep is back anyway, kind of thing. But actually, it just all went a bit like, you know, I was like, this is just not the same. It all went a bit sour. It all went a bit south. Jordan was like my best friend there, but told everyone I'd slept with him and I hadn't. So I was like, well, this is weird. Like, me and you have not had any kind of by the way I'm not a notch on Jordan Davies belt can I just you know <laughs> I, people always go oh my god did you sleep with that Jordan I'm like no no I didn't this is your Bill Clinton moment you did not have I did sexual... not have sexual relations with that man <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah no I didn't sleep with Jordan but he kind of made out like I did and then it was all a bit moody and I just thought oh I'm going to go and do capital so yeah. I just came home went on Capital instead. What a, what, a, what a beautiful segue into your stint as a radio presenter on Capital. But before we go there, reality TV, the pitfalls of it, the dark, the, you know, the downsides. We're hearing a lot, aren't we, at the moment about pitfalls of reality TV and the yeah. dark side and, you know, is the, is the aftercare there that should be there? What was, what was your experience of that? Wow. <laughs> so my experience of... of I think the duty of care very much was there when I was on reality TV. One, there was a therapist there at all times. And there was a bit of an incident, which I've never spoken about actually, with one of the guests where he tried to like stick his hand places it shouldn't have been, right there on camera in front of everyone. And then he, I was like, oh, he got sent home for it basically on a night out. I'm not going to go too much into it because I don't want to call him out. Because In the restaurants where he sh- you're not paid for? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so they know what we well it kind of wasn't a restaurant so you weirded me out of it oh. but, um and then he tried to stick his hands basically up my skirt and like further and i was like whoa matey mm-hmm. no and so i sort of said to production production you're, you're more mates with production than what you are with your cast by the way you do not give a flying hoot about your cast it's them production people who were the best and then you're like hey hang on he's just stuck his hands up places he gets sent home and next thing he's crying the next day going oh my life's over my life's over i didn't mean to do it and all that like and i was like oh it sounds you know like which is probably, I shouldn't have probably, but I was like, yeah, it happens all the time because it does, as a female, that happens. And so I was like, you know, we move, I'm not going to mention it. And then he was like, um, I need to speak to the therapist. And within about 10 minutes, the therapist was on Zoom to him. Like, so in that way, it was good. And like I say, the cast were there. And on my last day on season one, it got really heated and I ended up having murder with with one of the girls and it was all very emotional. And they got like my favourite um, production people in they were like oh Emma's come back for your H and I'm like Emma what's happening do you know what I mean like if it, so my experience of it is it is very good well we'll move on then because you said <laughs> um, that was really good but you said you move on to Capital yeah. Radio hosting Capital a, Radio hosting radio right across what Merseyside Capital for the North West and North Wales it's like that's like on a yeah. autopilot, yeah, yeah. It's still there, even though I haven't done it for what I haven't been there. G- for g- give years me now. how you because because obviously I'm new to this this broadcasting game. Yeah. So give you how, how would you start a, a show? It's a, it's Monday. It was morning, was it daytime or uh, midday? Midday. All right. Well, g- give me the Rachel Rhodes intro to her. Gosh, you pop, feel a bit on the spot here. I haven't done it for years. Okay, hang on, okay, me. It's just gonna... gone numb. I'm swapping feet. Hang on. Okay, so it's you know, on radio. Uh, yeah, yeah. Jason Derulo's last song is just just fading out, and in comes Rachel. That was Jason Derulo right there on Capital for the Northwest and North Wales. I am Rachel Rhodes. I am with you this afternoon, and I am buzzing. The sun is out. The city <laughs> is pumping, and here is Anne Marie. It is. Uh, what does she sing? I don't know. <laughs> on Capital. Woo! I mean, there was a little part where you just lost it a little bit. I don't think anyone noticed though. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you only notice it if it's on camera. That's the great thing yeah, about radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you can just keep talking and thinking. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's when you have to like. But the thing that people don't know is that you've got your full song list and you've got the countdown. So people are like, "Oh, how do they hit the vocal like that?" And you're like, "Because there's literally a huge countdown on screen telling yeah. you hey, the vocals are coming in now." You know that thing that they do where they're like, "Hit the vocal." And you're I, like, I think I've got an instinct for stuff like that. I don't even yeah. think I'd need the countdown. I think you should try it and then tell me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what was that? What was that like, though? I mean, I'm guessing D, being a DJ, that was the first first DJ job you've had i would never describe myself as a dj a dj no 
absolutely not no which is hysterical because people always go oh why don't you get on the decks and I'm like ah, no um but I was definitely more a presenter in that sense but it was an absolute ball one of the best jobs I ever did like absolutely loved it what a ball what a scream loved it loved it loved it so yeah um you it's the first you time the first time you you'd done anything like that yeah yeah don't get me wrong you have to do about 10 million demos before they let you on but then they, you sat there and they're like, um, off you go. Like, so you've done all your demos. You've had someone sat there like recording and helping you record. But no one shows you how to use a radio desk. And then you turn up for your first show and there's not another soul there. And you're like, oh, oh, I've got to figure this out myself. And it's complicated. That's the hard bit is doing all like that. Because you're, like, you're literally like, oh, throwing this up and pulling this down and making sure that song's not gone on. And if it's gone, if the song's gone off the off the list, you're buggered. Because you've got to now search it while you're talking. So you're like, oh, yeah. And then um, Ed Sheeran once said that. You know, <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying because I'm thinking something else. But it is, it's such an amazing job to have. But it's a shame because I think radio is like a dying breed a bit now. And it's such a fun job. And you can turn up in your jammies. I've done it so many times. My last show on Capital, I slept under the desk vomiting past myself because I was that hungover <laughs> from my goodbye leaving drinks. I was that hungover that I had to make uh, a pillows under the desk and vomit into a bucket. And it was like probably the worst show I ever did in my life. That's, but... that's how every episode of The Scouse House ends, Rachel. So <laughs> don't Crying you... <laughs> under the desk. No alcohol though. Just, we're all just going to kill no, up and cry. No, no, yeah. um, Well, Well, you, you mentioned there about, about radio being a dying a dying thing and, and, and half of that's because podcasts are getting so big. And I know you you had your, your own podcast with your... Very good link there, there, well done. Melissa, <laughs> uh, I'm learning. Uh, it was called what? Uh, <laughs> men, men Not Boys. Men Not Boys. <laughs> Yeah, what a podcast. And if um, if you know me in a professional sense, I advise you don't listen to it as is a warning uh, actually on my podcast because I'm like, if you're my dad or an ex-boyfriend, don't listen to this. Or if I've dated you, don't listen to it because I've probably ripped the hell out of you. Um, but yeah, it was, that was really fun to do. Me and my best friend, Melissa. And we're so different when it comes to dating men. And we're so different with our experiences with men, even though we're like best friends. So like she'd be, it was very honest, shall we say, got very um, raw in every sense of the word. Um, <laughs> but, you know, told some fantastic tales of lots of Tinder dates. See, for me, Melissa always in a relationship, so she'd always see things from a relationship point of view. And I'd always see things from a dating point of view. But it was always about, like, what a man would do versus what a little boy would do and how we want men and not boys. And so, like, our experiences with boys mm. and how a real man would have dealt with that situation kind of thing. So... What was some of the funnier, funniest Tinder stories then? That oh you, my goodness, I had. could write a book. The one that's famous with all of my friends and family. And oh my God. And do you know what? Because this is a Scouse podcast, everyone would understand this more. So, yeah. <laughs> Compose yourself, Rachel. It was so, it's so funny. It makes me laugh all the time. And whenever I'm having a bad day, I think about it. Um, so basically what happened was his name was Jack. Now his real name actually was Jack, but because there's so many Jacks, it doesn't matter. His good. name was Jack. <laughs> We're all good for the name Jack. And his surname's quite generic as well, but hey-ho. And um, I'd spoke to him on Tinder a few times. Now my advice would be always have a phone call first because whatever anyway so it was Lark Lane it was a Saturday afternoon we all know how gorgeous Lark Lane is on a Saturday afternoon especially when the sun is booming it was gorgeous so me being a little scouser had all my hair blown I had my little gold vest top on and my jeans and my gold wedges and I mean the sun was like beaming like you know that buzz come through from Sefton Park and it was about I'd say about two o'clock on a Saturday afternoon it's just a great place isn't it Liverpool in the oh, sun it's a great place to be just yeah. gorgeous and it was like booming and it was buzzing and it was such a lovely atmosphere and I go and meet up with him and um, I see him standing outside Milo Lounge <laughs> and literally my jaw nearly dropped to the floor because he had on tracky bottoms, trainers and he had on a string vest where I could see his nipples. If you would like to see some of the best new comedians in the Northwest, get yourself down to Laugh Hard Comedy at Rock Salt, hosted by me, Andy Roach, aj.rochi. Laughhard.co.uk for tickets. I'll see you there. I, I always get, like, guests a little a little chocolate bar, and I went Salted Caramel Lindor. What was it about me that made you think Salted Caramel Lindor? You just scream luxury, baby. Luxury, baby. Oh, I like that. Stuff straight talking Scout Siren. I'm luxury baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Love a bit of lint. Swiss made. Swiss made. 
but Scouse consumed. Anyway, <laughs> right, Rachel, you're on this date with a Scouser. Jack. Jack. Jack Generic, I think his Jack name was. Jack Generic, that's the one. How does it end with the guy? So basically, no, this is this is where it gets really bad. So we went to go into what was now Love and Rockets, and he got KB'd. And he went, lad, you can't come in in trackies. And he went, these trackies cost me 80 quid. What are you saying, lad? Is and the trackies was... not the string vest they had the problem with? <laughs> with the boobs out. Honestly, honestly, I was just so icked. And I went, oh, listen. And I made up this complete lie. And I was like, listen, I've got to perform an art school that I run, which was a complete lie. And um, they've just messaged me to tell me that the sound system's down. So I've got to go. And so I ordered the taxi and he was going, oh, you sure, you sure, babe? And I'm going, yeah, yeah. And don't get me wrong, he was lovely, but he did still have the green stuff hanging down his face. And I had like just spent like 60 quid in that place on pints for him alone. And then so I was like, oh, and then um, so he waited for me to get in a taxi, gentlemanly. Yeah, he should have done that. And then he tried to kiss me. So I basically had to do the backwards crab into the taxi. I was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to just go backwards. I swear to God, I've done all my neck, all my back. Uh-huh. Um, and then literally three years later to the day, he was messaging me, being like, do you want to go on another date? And I was like, I don't get how you thought that was good. Like, <laughs> and in the end, I think I did have to just say to him, I, d- I don't get it. Like, where, d- where did you think that was good? You know, try try better next time, maybe. Well, for more of those types of stories, check out uh, Rachel's podcast. Men Not Boys. <laughs> yeah, they're all on there and they're actually it's, quite brutal. I know it's Tinder date. I mean, I'm on Tinder, you know what I mean? My, my Tinder profile's so embarrassing, though. I don't Is even, it? Can I, I see I, it? I don't even let my girlfriend look at it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was one of my one-liners. Um, that so, was quite good, to be fair. I, I was like, can I see it? I, wanna say, yeah, I was going to rip it yeah, apart no. then. Um, Rachel. Yeah. One of the big things that we've had recently in the city, it was amazing. It was everywhere. Fabulous. Eurovision. Of course. You were a big part of the coverage of that with uh, with the guide. Yeah. Talk us through some of the some of the experiences of, of how I, that went. I think Liverpool smashed Eurovision. I honestly think it was one of the best events that we've had in years and years and years and years. Like the big Eurovision welcome party, that was insane. Um, like the celebrities that turned up for that was just unbelievable. The turquoise carpet, I feel like that went on forever. That was the longest carpet ever. The acts, like I think Liverpool really did ourselves proud and did Ukraine proud um, and so I, I had to do a lot of vox pops with people outside and actually we met Spain's family um, Blanco Paloma oh my goodness but this is how bad I was so I obviously don't know the name of every single individual act so they were like oh we are we, we are Spain's family yes yes and I was like oh my god amazing let's do an interview and they were like yeah great and then I was like who, who is it and they were like Blanco Paloma and I was like oh what's he singing and they were like it's a girl I was like oh no <laughs> Okay, um, but yeah, they were they were absolutely gorgeous. Like the people we met were just, they were just the most gorgeous people. We ended up having to get them tickets into the village though because no, they weren't allowed in the arena. By the way, oh really? That's how packed the arena was. That Blanco Paloma's family could not get into the arena to watch their own family member. I like the way they say we're Spain's family. <laughs> yes, well, <laughs> I don't think they spoke very good English. Oh right, sorry. To be fair, although they did correct me when I gen- un- like wrong gendered the. Uh, the the act but um yeah it was just it, it it was honestly one of the best and you know the weather was gorgeous the festival that they put on in town which was free by the way was insane the acts were amazing i swear to god jedwards was on one day like yeah. imagine just rocking into town and hanging out with jedwards um i saw the lightning seeds incredible ian we'll get you on one day Ian, what a babe. And his son, oh my God, they were just gorgeous, the two of them. Yeah, I interviewed him on the red carpet. What a lovely, lovely man. Um, red carpet was insane. Zara Larson is one of my favourite people in the world. There were a few divas, but I'm not mentioning any names. I'm not going to throw any more names on the floor except for Zara Larson, who was absolutely gorgeous. And she got taken away by her management, so I couldn't interview her. And I was like, oh my God, I need to interview her. Like She's like the headline act. She's unbelievable. Everyone packed up and then she just sort of tottered back over and was like, hey... I'm ready. And all the lights were off and everything. And I was like, Zara Larson standing there waiting for me. So I was like, Tom, who was my cameraman? Tom, Tom, get the camera, get the camera. Speaking of divas, Rachel, one of your colleagues there at the Guide Liverpool is, of course, Pete Price. Oh my God, what a babe! We yeah, love him. Yeah. Well, what, how would you describe Pete Price to someone who isn't from Liverpool? What is Pete Price? Pete Price is a Scouse legend, um, and no one really knows 
whether he likes being called a lizard or not. <laughs> <laughs> no one actually understands whether Pete is like offended or not offended by that. But and you're a close colleague of his, we should say that. I am a very close colleague of his, and I think I'm one of his favourite people in the world. I'm not even going to lie, me and Pete are like, uh, we come as a pair. Um, and I just think he is just someone who people hate to love. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's so lovable and people want to hate him, but actually, you love him. Yeah. He's such a babe. He's so funny. He's so good. Like, he's 77 years old, you know, He's and he's fantastic yeah. and he's great at his job. And do you know what is so cute? Every time you do anything with him, he loves to pop out from the camera. So he, he loves to be off camera and then go, hi. I was going to say, it's like a running joke, isn't it? You're always at these, um, you know, opening nights of a theatre show or, yeah. or a play or whatever. And then you always say about 30 seconds into a selfie video. And it wouldn't be <laughs> an opening night if it wasn't for... Be proud. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That was brilliant. <laughs> no, he's gorgeous. I absolutely love him. He's one of my favourite people I've ever worked with. You know, he's such a legend, and he takes it so well. And he 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 knows that he knows that it's all in jest. You know what I mean? He's such a good guy. I honestly, I do love him. All, all the things that you're doing with the guard, Rachel, opening nights, um, different events across the city. You must have seen so so many. Like what what two or three of the the uh, your favourite things in the city that you've been to? Well, I always love free food. Not going to lie, free food. Mamasan, I just love Mamasan. Um, there's that new restaurant, Ace. I would love to go there, hint, hint. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love the theatre shows. So I went to see Jersey Boys. I really didn't expect to love that. I thought that was phenomenal. I always love going to the theatre. Theatres are like a bit of my guilty pleasure. You know, and one of them, everyone's like, do you sit and listen to radio in the car? I'm like, no, I've just whack on any musical that's going. I'm like a proper geek, really. I'm like a proper loser when it comes to things like that. But um yeah, I think I think the free food, and you just can't go wrong. You know, I'm I'm actually like a secret fatty. You know, I love my dinner and I love nice food. And so, in general, I think any restaurant launch, I'm there like an opening of an envelope. Like I'd be at it. Like what a pitch, by the way. <laughs> any local restaurant? Any restaurants? <laughs> anyone? Wow! Me? Free pizza. You gain more scouts than I've ever seen anyone come. <laughs> But let's get serious. We invite people on to talk about the top scousers. Okay. And everyone wants to know, Rachel Rhodes, who are your who are your top scousers? So we're gonna have three. Let's three. go in order. Three, two, one. In at, no, in at number three. In at number three, I don't think I don't think the world of boxing would be the same without Natasha Jonas. I think her family are just stupidly talented. I think she is such a huge fabulous representation for the city and I love to box so I'd love to like have a little session with her I did see her in David Lowe's the other day nearly wet myself by the way literally I had to like restrain myself from jumping on her in the changing rooms thinking no it'd be weird it'd be weird that you're in the changing rooms asking Natasha Jonas to speak to you but um so I think she's I think she's phenomenal and you know what she's so quiet about it she's so normal she's not she's like fabulous and yet you she doesn't shout about it and I love that about her like I do think if you're fabulous, you should shout about it. But she's so modest, she doesn't even realise how fabulous she is. And isn't it family? Like, one of her sisters is a women's footballer and her brother's, like, an, an MMA fighter. And, like, literally, her whole family should just be sponsored by Nike. <laughs> like, she's fabulous. And, yeah, I love a boxer, me. I lo I'd love to get in the ring with her, although I think she'd kill me, like, flat. But, yeah, I'd say Natasha Jonas. Natasha okay. Jonas. Yeah. She's in, locked in. Locked in. <laughs> okay, number two. But I think I've got I've got a bit of a duo for number two. Oh. I think they come as a pair. And I think it's just because they're just so insanely talented and I've heard that the most normal people It's going to be Rachel Rhodes and Pete Price, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> well, can I have myself? Because I will. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay, so number two, it's got to be, and it's really, really obvious, I think. Um, Jodie Comer with Stephen Graham. Ooh. I'm going to allow it. I think you should allow it because they are basically like as much of a muchness. I think, you know, I don't even care about half the things that they've been in, but when I know they're in it, I'm like, oh, they're in it, I'll watch it. And then I'm like, frankly, that was boring, but they were brilliant. You know? I'm not really into, like, dramas and action movies and all that, but I think Stephen Gray, oh, my God. Oh, and then, oh, what's that thing that Jodie Comer was in with Stephen Graham about the care home in lockdown? Called Help. Was that what it was called? Oh, 
I think about that regularly. You know, that lives in my brain rent free. I think about it. Like, she is just brilliant. Like, so I think as a pair, I think they'd conquer the world. In at number one. Gotta be the one with a Laura Laura laughs. It's gotta be our Scylla. It's Scylla. Oh, yeah. I think Scylla's a ledge. I think she's done so much for the city and I think she's done... Um, I just think, you know, what a life she lived. She got to host Blind Eight. And I can now see the synergy between Scylla and yourself just in this moment right now. Oh, my God, I love that. The dating stuff. Exactly. You, you're on the dating stuff. I'd be a boss matchmaker, by she the way. She was from up that neck of the woods, was she, Walton? Let's hope so. Let's... Yeah, I think she was South. Well, well all the Beatles South were, Liverpool. weren't they? And she was mates with them, wasn't she? It's starting to make sense. So, what, what about what about Scylla? I'm sure you got all the albums and that. Do you know what? Like, she was a presenter. She was a singer. Oh my god, she's me. <laughs> <laughs> she actually is. So you have had yourself in, in around the world. I've just put Rachel Rhodes in at number one. <laughs> I am reincarnated of uh, Scylla Black. No, and oh my god, and she's Pete Price's mate. No lie, yeah. no lie. That's why you've done I it. I have only just realised that, but I am not even, I don't even care. I am number one with Scylla. No, yeah. I'm only joking. I couldn't even compare myself to Scylla Black. What a legend. She's a fabulous presenter. She was, and she, what a what a voice on it. And do you know what? Like, I just think it's just that blind date. Like, I used to watch that when I was a kid and I'd love to be a matchmaker and I'd love to host a show like Blind Date. And I just think... The Scouse accent on the on telly then was just unheard of, and yet she made it iconic. Like people still go, "Oh, we sell a black, a Laura, Laura laughs and all that." What was her other catchphrase? You probably do it better than me. I can't remember. What was it? Here's our Graham. Here's our Graham. Oh my God, my brother's called Graham. I'm not even lying to you. I'm finding certain. Wait till I tell my mum this. She's going like, to absolutely slap like, me and be like, "No, get over yourself." Yeah, psycho analyzing <laughs> someone through a podcast interview. When's a birthday? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that, it was a birthday the other day, wasn't it? Because Pete Price did a big trip. Okay, stop tribute. now. Oh. <laughs> That's amazing. So we and, and basically we've had three birds. Basically, and Stephen Graham, but you know, three birds and and, and Stephen Graham. No, I, I, I want to I pick it up on that. Have you got a problem with 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 you know girls from girls from Liverpool being called birds? Because it was it was in the news, wasn't it, a, a year or so ago? Oh no, that's like a pejorative um, term. My mum would be disgusted if someone called me their bird. But to me, I'm like, I'd be grateful for anyone to call me a bird. Like, take me. <laughs> a boyfriend, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's always nice. Like, to me now, I just see it as a term of endearment. Like, you know, when your boyfriend calls you your bird, you're like, oh, that's cute. But my mum would, would be like, I'm sorry, what did you call her? Yeah. Like, my mum would be so disgusted by it. So I think it's more of an old school where I think now it's more seen as a, a term of endearment. But like I say, the amount of awful Tinder dates I've been on, being someone's bird is always a blessing. Mm. You know, it's always it's always a lucky thing. There's... If it's if it's up between a string vest and sprayed on hair and being called a bird. I'd take the bird any day. <laughs> I never want to see spray. I'd rather someone have no hair than spray on hair. Just yeah. because it drips down your head. And, and trust me, it doesn't come out the same colour that it is on your head either. No. It was a tinge of green. I'll never forget it. And your, your, your mum sounds uh, an interesting my, character. She is my, fierce scouse woman. My mum is like Mrs. Weasley when she is... Do, do you understand the reference of that? Harry Potter? Yeah, and she says, Not to my daughter, you bitch! That's my mum. She's And then she's like a little mama hen. She's so cute and gorgeous. And she's so not like me. She always says to me, I do not know where I've got you from. I do <laughs> not know where you came from. She's so quiet. Like if I said to her, well, mum, we need to do some filming. Can you get on? She'd be like, no, no, she would not. She's so not into any of that. She's dead little and dead cute, but you don't mess with me because Did my mum will come for you. <laughs> like, do not my daughter, you bitch. Do you think Scouse women are... Fierce, strong women, yeah. You have to be, don't you? I think that's what makes us so famous for our for our attitudes, maybe. But I think, do you know what? So many men call women psychos, but do you know when I think when people say, oh, my ex was a psycho, I think, what did you do to make her a psycho? Because I don't think anyone's just a psycho for no reason. What did you do to make her a psycho? I just got a lint. I just got a lint, salt, salt of caramel, and she went off on one. Um, well, you know, just, it's just do that to me, yeah. <laughs> where, where did the straight talking scouse siren come from? Straight talking scouse siren came from uh, Joe Lysett on Ibiza Weekender. So as I walked out of Ibiza Weekender, I gave someone a big mouthful of, of abuse. You know. In, in a rare moment of losing your In a rare moment. Cool, Do you know what? No, it was. I was really quite calm and collected, but just told someone what I thought of them, which actually I'm quite good at. 
normally I collect my thoughts and then I'll just go, and this is what I think. And then it was like a mic drop moment. And Joe Lysa came in with, and this is why we call her the straight talking scouse siren. And my Twitter just went, Brr! <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's my tagline then. Um, so yeah, because when I did reality TV, it was all about Twitter, not Instagram. And now it's more about TikTok, isn't it? So the world moves. Catch the scouse house on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. You with the times, are you, babe? Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's all we've got time for with Rachel on the Scouse House. Rachel, you're welcome back anytime. Thanks. I feel as though within a week you'll have a, a brand new set of stories Absolutely for us. Absolutely, I will. And if, as long as there's another chocolate bar, I'm here. <laughs> there she goes. Thanks very much, Rachel. Thanks Take for care. having me. It's been fun. A little Texan. <laughs> <laughs>